Hello, buddy. Welcome back. David Giacomino, Kevin Walsh, Tom Takashuski. Yeah. Look at right. a smile on my face. <laughs> All you right. see where's that? He, he wrong? I, I can't where's even. He, wrong? I, he knows it. I haven't even said what we're talking man. about yet. I haven't even said oh, what we're man. talking about yet. I'm right. having a good day already. So it's, we're going to bring up a little baseball here. You sure? Your, your Mets, your, your Yankees, your big stories going around the league. All right. I know it's it's wants to be talked about. All right. Mets have not looked good <laughs> for the start of the year. They're losing 10-3 oh, right, uh, currently to the Marlins. They just lost to the Phillies. No, they lost the series 2-1. They split versus the Royals. All right, is it time for Panic City yet, or uh, it, it, should we just say relax? Well, it All depends. Right. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take my headset off and not listen. So <laughs> if you were realistic about your baseball team going into the season, there's nothing to panic about because you knew this was coming. Your rotation is wonderful. It's the best in baseball. Your lineup is atrocious, <laughs> and it's one of the worst in baseball. It is the exact same team you had in the first half of last season, and that had you barely at 500 in second place of your division, which is right where you're headed because your lineup is not good at all. That's not an exaggeration. It is bad. Let You, ha- you know how many guys on your team last year hit above 270? Cespedes, that's it. That's horrible. It's atrocious. Listen, I, I was joking around. Going into the year, Reds and Phillies are arguably two of the three worst teams in all of baseball. The Phillies got swept by the Reds. Hey, I was Red, like, Red, Reds are nice. They're five and one. Yeah, listen, they ain't, they ain't joking around. But listen, go. We so right away, I was like, all right, the Reds are saying we're not the worst. We're clearly. And and I was talk, I was talking to Ann. I said, whoever loses the first series to the Phillies should have to cut a player from their from their starting team. So at this point now, the Mets would have to cut a player because they lost a series to the Phillies. Listen, come on, dude. One nothing shutout to the Phillies. I don't care what Vincent Velasquez was throwing. I don't care what he was throwing. You are not going to win the division like this. You think Velasquez was tough to hit? Good luck with Strasburg. Good luck with Scherzer. I'm sure Jake Arrieta will be a breeze. Yeah, right, right through Kershaw, right through Granke, right through Bumgarner, right through Cueto. What? Your rotation's wonderful. They're wonderful. But these other teams have lineups where. They, you don't get consistent, easy outs. Once you hit the fifth spot in the Mets lineup, it's like, eh, well, this is easy. Well, actually, the way it's been, it's actually been one through four have been atrocious, and then Walker and Conforto have been okay. Although, apparently, Conforto, as I told you, is, will he play against lefties? And for some reason, now he's not going to play. Why? Legaris did good in spring training. It's a joke. The, the, the lineup... Doesn't match the rotation. Give me the Cubs lineup. Give me the Mets rotation. I'll show you a World Series team. But it's not like that. I mean, look, the Cubs are fine because their their rotation's good enough already to win, and that's why people like the Cubs going into the season. Uh, it, it, there's no hate. There's no animosity uh, towards the Mets. <laughs> I'm just saying. But if you were a Mets fan who's in there, World Series, woo, we're gonna do it again. It. it yeah, com- panic. Be concerned, because now you're seeing what you blindly forgot was the problem from last year. All right, I'm gonna quote a very uh, good player here. R E L A X, relax. An Aaron Rodgers quote. Yes, an Aaron Rodgers quote. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I say that is, the Mets got off to a very slow start last year. Grandison did the same thing he did last year. Yes. Just keep calm. The Mets bats will come around. They only need to be okay, and they will win the majority of their games. Not really. Yes. Not yes. really. All right. They I have the be. best. They have the best ERA throughout the first whatever, but they have the lowest batting average. Obviously, it's not going to stay like that. Right. Their team, Cespedes, is just about to heat it up. He had a ho- big home run yesterday. He had another RBI <laughs> today. All right, so I can be like the mediator here because I'm not a Yankee fan or a Met fan. I'm kind of like a neutral party in this. But the thing about the Mets is that you say, like, oh, yeah, it happened last year. We started slow. But honestly, like, that was one year. Like, I got nothing against the Mets. I thought the run they put together last year was awesome. It was fun to see. But that was one year. You can't act like you're a historically great end-of-the-season team when you only had one (laughs) really good year. I mean, I I really don't want to, like, pick on you here. The thing about the Mets, yes, you have that awesome rotation. Neil Walker has stepped up. 
kind of he's been he's been pretty good. Not better than Daniel Murphy. If we may, may, may we please but make point of say ma- uh, no, they don't. It, it's not panic time. But I I read somewhere I think it was the New York Times, uh, when the Mets I think won the first game against the Phillies. The first line was the Phillies are gonna be historically terrible this year, and the Mets need to beat up on teams like the Phillies and like. The Marlins, who aren't going to be that good this year either, I don't think. No, the, I I think the Marlins would be okay. The Marlins yeah, but, are not but as think, bad. Okay, if you're a World Series team, you got to beat the okay. Ma- the Marlins' teams. record will be inflated through beating the Phillies. Listen, and listen, Braves. and if you recall, Mets did the same thing last year and then went on like a 12 game winning streak. Yeah, Why? But, but again, that's that's one year. If you say no, they did that in past the, in the three of the year, seasons. I'm saying. They started the year off on a 12 game winning streak and then they went to Yankee Stadium and Degrom got bombed. Oh yeah, what are you talking about? They started off slow last year. Their hitting wasn't great at the start of the year. No, they were hitting the baseball. They were actually playing baseball like a team. Listen, listen. There's no reason to believe that they can't do that again. There's, 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 oh. No, no. There isn't a thousand percent reason to no, believe that. There is. Darno doesn't play 160 games. Lucas Duda, your power hitter, hits. 27 home runs in a season hits 15 of them in a two-week span. So that's yeah. irrelevant while batting 246. Your leadoff hitter bats 240, but walks a lot, so he's the leadoff hitter, even though he should be batting third. David Wright can't walk. <laughs> I agree with you on that. Conforto, potentially your best actual hitter, isn't allowed to play versus lefties. Oh, is Dribble Cabrera and Neil Walker going to save the season? Probably not. Hey, listen. I'd probably back to Grom like fifth or sixth if I could. <laughs> uh, uh, about Cabrera, I, I'm a Rays fan, so I saw him last year. Don't expect anything. We signed him better thinking than last, than last year shortstop for the Mets. I don't know, honestly. I don't know because we saw the Rays signed Cabrera thinking we're gonna get him as a bargain because he's kind of aged, but he's been a solid player his whole career. Last year he had, I think, the worst year of his career. He was pretty bad last year in the field too. He was pretty atrocious. So. If you're leaning on Cabrera to be your kind of star, kind of the no, savior, no, the listen. the X factor, I should say, not the star, the X factor, it's not gonna happen. You need Cespedes to step up. You need Conforto to step up. Listen, you need Duda to step I, up. I am not concerned for the fact that Terry Collins will get this group going. He said today, "Listen, if it comes down to it, I'm gonna do exactly what I did last year. If you don't hit, you're not going to play." And it it, it what a fire on these guys last year, and it ma- it made them hit. Because they knew if they w- didn't produce, they were not going to be in the lineup the next day. How many and that games? goes for everybody on the roster. Just not, not doesn't matter if David Wright not is the captain. If he doesn't pull, if he doesn't hit, he's not going to play. How it's many that games simple. in the season are the Mets right now? Like eight, five, five, five. five. Six, so there's no six, obviously no six, reason six, to panic. Six, uh, yeah, there's no. There's no re- you listen, brought up the panic thing. No, there's no reason to panic. There's no reason. There's no reason to panic. Is it, panic time is like mid May. That's when you're like you, you get a good grasp of your team. All star break. No, not even that. May, Dude. May is you know you know your baseball team in May, and I for the fact that the only thing I'm concerned about is the Grom's injury because that injury can he has the same injury as Steven Matz last year and that kept them out two months for that and they had no idea it was gonna take that long for him to come back but you know he's got the whole baby thing going on right now and I, I'm just, that's the only thing I'm concerned about is we need to get him healthy and as long as he comes back he's fine and. There's no reason to panic yet. See, I have a problem. I, have, I said yet. There's I've, no reason to panic yet. I have a problem with what you're saying, okay? Yes, there's no reason to panic because if you looked at your team, you knew that this was going to happen. But there's more to be concerned about than DeGrom's injury, and that is your lineup. It is I'm not, not concerned about the lineup. Why? Because they, they have... If, I, if, the, the, the if that were my favorite team's lineup, lineup I would to, be terrified. The, the lineup doesn't need to hit, you know, 10 runs a game. They no. don't need to do that. But they, they, they need, they, they to, need to score enough. four. They need to do enough. But they, they don't. They can do enough. They don't. They can do enough. Here's the thing, right? When when the Marlins go out and put... They put up seven in the second inning. That one inning of work, and I knew... You know it for a fact. That's enough to beat the Mets. There's no question. They're not coming back. They're not. The Red Sox, they could come back from that. They did it the other day versus the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays can come back from that. Those are good lineups, strong lineups, with the middle packed with guys that you fear. I don't want to face Donaldson. I don't want to face Jose Batista. I don't want to even face David Ortiz or Mookie Betts. Oh, Cespedes? 
I'll walk him, and I'll face Duda and Conforto and Walker and Granderson, and I'll definitely face David Wright as many times as possible. I think Conforto will be the three hitter by the end of the year. That's I. I think the three hitter playing no, playing I, I, two I, of, I, two I, out of the three days though. I think it's gonna come to a point where he has to play every day. Now this is my question to you, right? Guys have to hit in order to stay in the lineup. Jonas Cespedes last year, when he came, was outstanding. Postseason came around, he was bad, right? So let's say and he he, he, off, he's probably the exception to that rule. They're not well, gonna take him out of the lineup. Could, could, but then, but then, so so it applies to everyone but yeah. Cespedes. Yeah, just because you know what he can do. And who's wait? Who's the backup first baseman? Uh, Fl- Wilma Flores. Oh, he's the he's Wilmer. the back, he, he, he's the backup everything. <laughs> but that's you can't. So so Duda can't be taken out of the lineup. I have no idea what I dropped. Oh, it was a headset. Whatever. Um, I come listen. Listen, all right. We'll Dave, end, we'll end if, the, if you if you straight up asked me the the problems with every MLB team, I'll tell you them. The Mets' problem is their lineup. I'm not saying the Mets lineup is going to be great. I think I, they can I do not. enough, and that's all they need from the lineup. Is I, they need to do enough, and they I think they can. You hope. All right, we'll finish the Mets there. <laughs> we'll we'll ship it over to the other side of town, New York Yankees, which their pitching has not been that great at it's, all. It's, it not been that great at all. CC has been the best performer out of all of them, sh- shockingly. But <laughs> CC's back their hitting line. has been outstanding. Sterling Castro. Mm-hmm. Welcome to New York. Mm-hmm. You know, Didi Gregorius too. He's been hitting. He's been that's big. He's nonstop telling me about it. I Didi. text him every time. Didi, 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 Didi gets an RBI. We, <laughs> we picked him up on our fantasy team just because of that. <laughs> I text him every time he gets an RBI. Um, no, but in all real, real talk, he, the lineup has been great from every aspect. You know, Teixeira has been doing good. A Rod's been doing good. Really, he's been have a solid lineup. And uh, I'm I'm not saying you know who knows if this is going to continue forever. But the way their pitching has looked, they need to continue doing this in order for them to make a run because the Red Sox have looked pretty good. The Blue Jays have, uh, because of their pitching. But their lineup needs to continue doing this. And I think they actually can. I think they have the ability to put up four or five runs a game. So if they do that, then I like their chances. But it's hard to believe that the lineup will continue, continue to do this because we saw what happened. A couple of days ago, it's Jordan Zimmerman. You know, he kind of shut them down, and they lost because they didn't have, you know, their, their pitching wasn't good enough. Yeah, I mean, you know, you mentioned the Red Sox. The Red Sox have the same problem. I mean, they've been scoring a bunch, but they give up. They give up, you know, seven to Cleveland, then they gave up another seven to Toronto, then they gave up nine to their Baltimore. I mean, they've been giving up a lot of runs as well. Um, the the thing with the Yankees is, so they're currently three and two. They faced in my opinion, two of the pitchers they've faced have been good, respectable pitchers, Zimmerman and Keuchel. They, you know, somewhat dominated the Yankees, to be completely honest. Um, because I know Didi hit a home run in that game, I believe it was against Houston, uh, off it was Ken Giles. And then Strong Castro had a, had a two RBI uh, double. And Zimmerman completely, I mean, they shut out the Yankees that day. But then the Yankees came back and, and they bounced back with a, with a whole bunch of runs. Um, you know, the, to me, the interesting question is, what would you have more confidence in? The Yankees lineup staying this way or the Yankees pitching staying this way? You know, what, yeah, and um, to me, I, I think I, that, I mean, the answer is no. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? I, like, I think it, it, the Yankees it aren't going to score eight runs again. I, I think it kind of balances itself out because going into the year, I didn't think the pitching would be good, but I didn't think it'd be this bad. So I think it might just balance itself out. They're not The pitching won't be as bad, but. The hitting won't be as good either, so I don't know. I mean, that's t- tough to say. It's tough to say. It's only been five games, six again, games. So. Again, and of course, you know, we're doing this five games in the season. The thing, though, that's encouraging for, you know, that should be encouraging for Yankee fans is, you know, we, we've kind of spoke about this. You look at the division and the way it breaks down. Um, and again, everyone just kind of sees the Rays as the as the bottom team, right? So you kind of disclude them when talking about it. Hey, Sorry, bud. You know, <laughs> my my little brother actually he's he's a he's also a, he's a Mets fan first, but he's a Rays fan second. Yeah. Loves the Rays, um, so you, you know he can he can hang with John now. We one. can hang out. But <laughs> no, um, no. But what I was trying to say was when when you look at you know those top four teams, right? The Red Sox, the Blue Jays, and the Orioles are all kind of pretty similar. Crazy good lineups. I, yeah, but you, starting you, pitching terrible. You talk about that, but. The Orioles are six and zero. And is this team for real? Uh, it, it's we're six. It's six. No, and but six games it's, in the season. I know that. Obviously that. Yeah, 
I mean, what happened? Buck Showalter, they, they, they could lose out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you don't that's that's the. Oh, I know, but Buck Showalter brings these guys and ready to play. Man. He's, he's, he's a great he's, general manager. He's a great. General I don't think manager. anybody was talking about the Orioles. I, I think people were saying they were going to fall off. Oh, lot. I mean, that, I mean, I think that would would have been a mistake then. I mean, Manny Machado is one of the you, young up and comers. Can you say anybody in the rotation at right at, at this point? Yeah, yeah, Ivan Gariato. <laughs> yeah, is their, is their front man, but which is huge. And I, I don't, and Chris Tillman. I mean, I, I know, I've, I've been kind of you know studying up on at least you know with the AL East and the NL East, just trying to. Yeah. Um, but this is the thing, they're so those teams, the Orioles, the Red Sox, and the Blue Jays, their pitching's terrible, but their lineups are outstanding. I mean, you go through the, the through the Orioles, and you've got Adam Jones, Chris Davis, Manny Machado. Those are three guys you got to fear, right? Blue Jays, Tulo, Donaldson, Batista, and Carson. Those are four guys you got to fear. Mookie Betts. Xander Bogarts and and Big Poppy, those are three guys that you really got to fear. Then you get though to um, the Yankees, and, and you know what I'm saying? like at this point in in A Rod's career, I don't put him up there necessarily. I, I mean, A Rod can do it, but yes, <sighs> but you know how much are we trusting to share? There's a lot of question marks in that lineup, but the Yankees rotation to me is clearly better than that of those other teams. Tanaka, Pineda. Um, I, in seven, I, I, seven Alex Reno. Severino, I, I, really, I think he's going to be the front man by the end of the year. I, think he's, I don't it, know if it, by the end of the year, I, but eventually. I, I think he, they make the playoffs, he's starting game one. Because t- t- Tanaka has been throwing his it. fastball 89, 90 miles an just hour. Tanaka needs surgery and just won't get it. Uh, Tanaka sh- needs Tommy John. Yeah, I mean, everyone just, knows that. I know, but point, you gotta, you're, you're, is you're that your ace? Is your ace throwing 80, 89, 90 miles an hour? And, well, placement over everything. Oh, yeah, but, you know, he leaves a splitter up. He's been doing that more than he normally would. Well, one of the things too, though, for the Yankees, the long ball's killing them. They Hence, you leave a little splitter up and your yeah. fa- a fastball up. That's not you, you can't do that when you're throwing ninety miles an no, hour. If you make make a mistake, not. it's going over the fence. Yeah, but I think just the encouraging thing for the Yankees is it looks like they might be able to hit with these teams. And to me, just based on you know where. You know, best case scenario for these rotations, the Yankees have the highest ceiling as far as best case scenario. So that's encouraging for the Yankees because, I mean, to me, that it was just such a question mark team coming into the season. Um, you know, so so that to me is is a good sign for the Yankees. Again, it's a it's a five game, you know, summer. Yeah. So, so we'll we'll, 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 we'll see with both of these teams. We're just gonna take a quick break, then we'll come back and we'll talk more baseball, and we'll get into basketball a little bit. So we'll just take take a quick quick break. Sounds good. 